Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Midweek Brief. My name is Anthony, and on behalf of uh, FP Markets, thank you for attending. As always, the idea of this meeting is to just provide you with some quick information for the week ahead and for the days ahead in terms of the market. Before I proceed, as always, please use the Traders Hub for all account holders. You're entitled to it. It's a brilliant place to get your analysis, technical, fundamental, news, company updates, educational materials. We can see you've got fundamental analysis videos, research and education with everything you need, platforms and tools, even ebooks. So please feel free to use it. And if you have any questions, just reach out to us. If we go ahead and get started, then we can clearly see that the main focus today is the last day of the campaigning for the UK election. And um, Thursday, as tomorrow, as I publish this video, is the election day in the UK. To keep it short, Labour are favourites. Conservatives are expected to be second, with Lib Dems or possibly Reform Party coming in third. If you're not familiar, the Conservative Party are traditionally right wing and the Labour Party are traditionally left wing. However, as times have changed, these factors have changed too. So the favourite is Keir Starmer. And who is Keir Starmer? Keir Starmer is this gentleman here on the screen. He's actually a knight from the British Empire. Um, he's got a history in criminology and the court system. As a person, he's not a bad person, it doesn't seem. Um, he just seems to lack any charismatic skills. So this election is definitely something that is likely to affect the British pound. Um, most people are not seeing this as a dreadful appointment as prime minister, especially considering the past few decades have not been good for the UK in terms of who they've appointed. So Thursday, we will know uh, by the evening who is the new prime minister of the United Kingdom. If we move on to the next region, uh, will be France. France is on the verge. And just to make it clear, France has a unique system where they have a president and a prime minister. Now, a prime minister represents government and the president is the president. Usually the president has the last call, the last shots on a lot of things, but he's also nothing. He or she is also nothing without the government as well. Now, it's expected that the Le Pen family or Barine Le Pen in this case uh, with her group are likely to win and gain the majority in the government in France. This would be a unique situation where you have a left-wing president and a right-wing government, and eventually could lead on to a right-wing president coming in. It's kind of frowned upon, but we are seeing this increase across Europe, increase in right-wing politics. Uh, we had the European elections recently, and the vast majority of the members voted across the continent were right-wing affiliated or at least conservative affiliated. So it'll be interesting to see what actually happens. We know that the French economy has suffered over the past two, three weeks because of this. Uh, some people see it as a bad thing. Some people see it as a good thing. However, the people are voting and the majority seem to be voting with the right wing parties. What the independents and the smaller parties who usually work with uh, the left wing government are actually pulling out. So they're not submitting themselves for nomination. Why? They're hoping that those voters will abstain from them voting, voting for them usually, and will shift over to the more left wing parties, taking away power from the right wing parties in this case. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. In other election news, I'm sure most of you, or I hope most of you, uh, saw the debate a week ago between Trump and Biden. Before we touch on that, um, Trump has actually been given some presidential immunity whilst he was in office regarding the hush money case. Um, regarding some other cases, he's actually been let off, but they've actually postponed his hush money trial verdict until September um, which is even closer to the election. Um, this is neither seen as a good nor a bad thing. It's just an update on the situation there. But as for the election itself, we saw that Biden really struggled. It's no secret, regardless if you're a fan of him or not. Uh, the US dollar was affected. Uh, people are losing their faith in the American system. So it seems that there is a chance that Biden could be replaced last minute by another candidate. Now, there's speculation who it could be, although favourites are saying it could be Gavin Newsom. Why? Um, he's young, he's charismatic, he's an entrepreneur, he's a businessman. His policies are very soft and have not led to very good things. He's also the governor of California. 
they've got a major fentanyl crisis, uh, immigration crisis, and many crises across their healthcare sector. So he's not actually done a very good job, but he's quite charismatic. And, and sadly, that's how a lot of people feel nowadays when they vote. People have seemed to have gone away from voting for logical policies as opposed to if they like the guy or not. I'm sure you maybe if you're a Trump supporter, you may have had people that are just really anti-Trump because they just don't like the guy, regardless of his policies. So time will tell. But the, the strange thing about this that's caused America some scrutiny here is their election system. There is, I'm not aware of any other country, I may be wrong, but I'm not aware of any other country which allows the candidate to be replaced last minute by someone else. To put that into context, that's like run... Uh, that's like doing a nine round boxing match. And in the eighth round, they decide to pull out the opponent and replace with someone else. Now, a lot of people will be voting for Trump because they don't have faith in Biden. But if they replace Biden with someone a bit younger and charismatic, then those people might switch over. And that seems to be the plan here. Although the Democratic Party at the moment are stressing that they have no intention to, but they're not exactly going to admit that they are yet so it'll be interesting to see uh, it's very much accepted though as cnn have reported the new york post um that biden has to go his cognitive skills are not there and um, people are losing faith in him if we actually switch over to different news that's not election news we've got the ukraine situation the first let's say, European country that is pro-Russian has visited Zelensky and encouraged to adopt a ceasefire plan. Um, makes sense that they would try to push a ceasefire plan as we're months away from election in America, but also we've got ongoing elections. So perhaps they're trying to put a ceasefire, freeze everything in place, like Putin mentioned before, and they want to see what the political landscape becomes so they can then do the necessary. But in a nutshell, uh, Viktor Orban went to... Uh, went to Ukraine, met Zelensky. But on the very same day, there was reports coming through that Ukraine security services foils coup attempt. This is not new news. This has happened before. There's also been assassination attempts. The one thing that was different about this time is that the four, the four people that were arrested were actually full-on Ukrainian nationals. So it seems that there seems to be internal strife now going on as well. There's been similar situations to this past, but they've been more Russian-affiliated or they have been Russian citizens. Um, living in Ukraine who have conducted this. So this is a bit of a game changer on the front. Um, there's a lot of powers that seem to want to slow down the war there again until the end of the year when they can reevaluate the situation. In terms of other news, we can see that Putin actually has gone to Kazakhstan. He was in North Korea a week or so ago. He's now in Kazakhstan with Xi Jinping, the Chinese leader. Of course, the media are playing up there. Oh, my God, these, these evil leaders are meeting together, and I'm not exactly pro-Putin in any way, but their meeting with their allies is no crime. Um, Western countries do it all the time. You're seeing a president fly from one country to another, stopping off, um, having drinks. It's, it's normal. And they're also part of the BRICS, uh, which we can touch on in future meetings. So it doesn't surprise me that they are meeting. This is what allies do, and it's just more scaremongering by the media. If we go to Israel's situation, the major developments, two fronts in this conflict, they've now told people to evacuate Khan Yunus again, as they're going to do some airstrikes uh, to try and destroy the last, what they say, the last remnants of Hamas. I think there's probably more Has Hamas fighters, uh, members, that are still hidden um, and probably would never be able to destroy them 100%. Yet only a few days ago, Netanyahu did say that he was close to achieving his objective. I'm not really sure what it was. And um, that they, they plan to slow down the war. But then as of yesterday, they start telling people to evacuate. So we're getting conflicting reports. And this just adds to the instability in the region, especially when we consider if we go to the north of Israel, which we can see here, in this region here, we can clearly see that the airstrikes from Israel upon Hezbollah within Lebanon has increased. So the war is stretching. Uh, the activity is actually slowly decreasing in Gaza because there's not much of it left, sadly. Um, but it's increasing in the north. So it's a two, two front war going on. Bearing in mind, they have to keep an eye on the West Bank. Now, the difference is the West Bank uh, doesn't necessarily have much of a military or anything like that. It's, it's a, you know, it's a struggling region, but it's allied with Jordan, Iran and the West. So if Israel are not careful, they could end up fighting a war on three fronts. And we're also seeing that Hezbollah have started to warn 
countries like Cyprus about uh, letting the Israeli Air Force use their airports. Um, so yes, this is causing uh, a bit of uh, tension within the region. If we look at gold, gold is found its new range. It's now bouncing around here. Reason being is people are sort of sitting back waiting. Um, I don't think gold's going to go down anytime soon unless we get some ceasefire talks and some fair elections going on, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but this is could be the quiet before the storm, as I've mentioned before, especially of what's going on in Israel, Ukraine situation, but also with the elections. So over the coming weeks, months, we could get more of a decisive direction of which way gold is going to go. If we go over to the economic calendar, ADP employment changed today, a nice precursor to the NFP on Friday. Now, bear in mind, Thursday is 4th of July, the American markets are closed, so don't expect too much movement around US dollar. If anything, it will be an opportunity for other currencies to try and gain on it, standard practice. But we do have the ADP employment change coming out today. They're forecast at 100K, although the numbers differ depending on what calendar you use. It was 152 previous, so they're expecting it to go down, um, whereas the NFP is expecting it to go up. So we've got a conflict um, of opinions there. What will decide which way the NFP is likely to go will be the ADP employment change today. So put that out. That is something to definitely keep an eye on. It's likely to affect the dollar and also will give you an insight into the NFP on Friday. We've also got initial jobless claims come out, balance of trade, Canadian dollar can be traded as well. So US dollar, Canadian dollar is good. There, there'll probably be a lot of volume today um, because it is close tomorrow. So a lot of traders will be wanting to do as much trading as they can out of those markets. And FOMC minutes, um, this is not a live event. This is just data that's released, um, but people still trade off of it. Uh, it's about the Federal Reserve and Jerome Powell, and they're likely to mention about interest rates and inflation rates and possible cutting. A lot of countries, Canada were the first, uh, have started to cut their interest rates as they climb out of this inflation bubble slowly. Uh, America hasn't yet, and I can only put it down to the fact that perhaps Jerome Powell wants to give it just a few more months until the election comes so they know what president they're dealing with, so they know which way the economy is likely to go. It's no secret that Donald Trump, uh, despite his flaws, was very good when it came to economy, uh, rebuilding it after the, the virus, after the pandemic. Um, so perhaps Jerome Powell's waiting to see if he comes back to power so he knows whether to cut it or not, or vice versa, if Biden or another candidate come in, then they know they're going to have to deal with it in a slightly way. It makes sense. It's just an inconvenience to traders, of course, and to the general public. So NFP Friday is the big one for the week to focus on. As you can see, we've also got unemployment rates coming at the same time, average hourly earnings, so a lot of information. And also don't forget that Canadian dollars got unemployment rates. This doesn't happen every month, but some months you do get them come out exactly at the same time. So I think a good USD CAD uh, pair is likely to be attractive to a lot of traders. If we touch on stocks for the week, I mentioned one particular company quite a lot recently, and I had no intention to until some news came out the other day. Boeing. Boeing's having a lot of problems at the moment. You'll hear a lot of people talk about latest turbulence situation as injured 30 and had to land in Brazil. The thing is, I'm not saying they're not wrong. I'm not an expert in the matter. Um, a lot of people are talking about climate change. Oh, this is climate change. This never happened before. I really don't think it is because when you look at the stats and the previous cases like this, it's the same, you know, same perpetrator, which is Boeing um, and specifically more their Dreamliner model. Um, this means that there could be a design flaw, a technical flaw, or people are not maintaining the planes correctly. Perhaps they don't have the knowledge because this is a new newer aircraft or, you know, it's past few years it's come out. So this is not looking good for Boeing because especially as only a week or two ago, the, the CEO of the company uh, came out and admitted that he gets paid very well and he actually got a double um, salary this year compared to last year, despite all of the situation with Boeing, their planes, the whistleblowers disappearing. So Boeing's not looking good in light um, compared to other airline manufacturers such as Airbus. Boeing shares at the moment have gone up and down with news recently over the past few days. At the moment, it's quite before the storm. 
we are not expecting this to go up or down with this particular news, but this is an acorn that can grow into a great big oak tree because once they investigate it, all it takes for them to come out and say, no, this is nothing to do with climate change. This is more likely to be a design flaw. Then all of a sudden you've got a huge case open where you're going to see airliners um, British Airways, it may be, it could be Emirates, it could be Alaska Airlines, it could be whatever it may be, uh, they are likely to seek compensation, maybe return the planes out of safety fears, and then it opens up a whole Pandora's box there. So this is something to keep an eye on now, but could unfold over coming weeks or months. And if we actually look at um, Apple, Apple shares have increased over the past few days. Why? Because they are now going to have a seat or a couple of seats on the OpenAI board. Now, what this means is OpenAI is rivals to Apple in terms of the AI technology, but now they're going to adopt the OpenAI technology into Apple systems moving forward for their new phones and MacBooks. They've actually got a seat at the table, so they're in the company, they're inside their competitor, and instead of fighting against each other, they're going to work together. Apple have no power in the board of directors, but they're able to sit and observe to understand which way the company's going with its AI technology, so they know how to implement it best. So it's a win-win situation for both. This is makes sense. This is a good business decision. You don't always have to be aggressive in competition. Sometimes you need to work together if it's the best for both companies. The result of this being Apple shares over the past few days have increased with this news, um, which is good. And they're projected that they could potentially over overtake Microsoft as the big boy in the group. So that's your weekly roundup. Any questions, anything you would like to add, please leave in the comment section. Please like and subscribe. It means a lot so we can do more of these videos. And if you have any other questions or you want to uh, speak to someone, please reach out to us, email us or contact our live chat. Thank you very much.